It's been a long time. It's been a long time. It's been a minute. Uh, we took like 30 days off for my personal reason. My bad on that one. You know, life is a struggle. Struggle is real. But nonetheless, we're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. We got uh, one person missing, Mr. Jir. Uh, we can put him on a, on a blast right now. Right now. Um, as I always say, you know, introduce my team first and... Uh, my guests and everything. So we have DJ P in the house. Glad to be back. Hey, how was your how was your one month off? Did you enjoy it? It was cool. Oh, I yeah? missed I missed being here. Oh yeah, I know. You were like calling me every day, like, bro, let's go. You know, we gotta keep uh, it cracking. Got got. Then we have our uh, producer, Mr. T Rock, T Rock, T Rock. It was too long of an off time, man. Man, I, I know, man. <laughs> well, we're here, man. The man, the mint behind the camera is Mr. Producer, Mr. T Ride. And then we have our artist in the building, Mr. Artist. How do you, how do you pronounce your name, bro? Tree All right, and then nonetheless, we have amazing, amazing guests in the house, Mr. Smooth Vega. Yo, what up? Incredible. I'm incredible. late to the party, but I'm at the party. You know what I'm saying? So, I, can I plug in? I, I mean, Smooth is wearing like glasses. I never wear glasses on my podcast. I felt like you know, I feel like Smooth right next to the Smooth. You know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I gotta wear the glasses. I, I, I caught it. I caught it. I was like, yo, he's trying to uniform this whole interview. You know what I mean? It's the greatness coming, you know, this way I'm like soaking it in, you know, soaking it in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Mr. Smooth here, um, Smooth Vega, he is incredible. He's local, Fort Worth, uh, producer, entrepreneur, uh, amazing, amazing artist. Um, and I will uh, let him plug in a little bit more. What, do you, what else you do, man? You do a lot of stuff. I know that. Uh, you know what? Entertainer. It's such a hard question to answer because, you know what, I was just talking to a friend of mine the other day. I said, you know, and not to sound braggadocious in any way, shape, or form, but I don't know anybody that does exactly what I do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like I mean, I know people that do one of the of the things, but not all of the things I do. So, per technicality, you know, I started as an artist, so uh, I know how to create music. I know how to produce music. Obviously, I know how to write music. So, music creation, I know how to do. Awesome. Right? Uh, I I jumped into being a promoter. I'm uh-huh. a talent buyer, so I actually book concerts. I write tours, and I just got done doing a festival. This Congratulations! Week. Yeah, congratulations! I just, I just did that man. literally amazing show. I saw some pictures. It looked like man, it looked like Dallas, like big time, like you know AAC. You know, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're yeah, it was getting it, was, it out there. Yeah, it was uh, about like oh shit, now like three or four days ago, but it was it was a really successful event. But I'm a promoter. Uh, a lot of people don't know that I'm actually a graphic designer. You know, I've done a lot of artwork for T. Ryan, for 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 Snoopy. So you know, uh, I also do uh, web design. I I act as a broker, as an agent. Wow. As an as a manager, I just started recently managing an artist by the name of X. B. Valentine. So like, in addition to all of the other roles that I play, like those are kind of some of the things I do. So like, I kind of play different. It's kind of hard because I think within within the context of being in the music industry, in order to like master anything, you gotta know how to do everything. Uh-huh. I just so happen to be pretty good at everything I do. You know what I mean? So like, that's kind of where I've seen. I that, mean, so. it it took you uh, a long time though get to this point, right? Yeah, yeah. But I left out. I also have a podcast as well. Well, guess <laughs> what? I was about to get to that. Uh, nothing beats experience. That's what I was getting at, anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, that's our podcast for my man Smooth Vega. Um, and then it's on, on YouTube is actually called uh, YouTube Premier Live TV. Correct. That's the one you want to go to. And, and if you want to follow Smooth, it's at Smooth Vega with V E 
G A. G A. I misspelled it. <laughs> no, he misspelled it on the paper. He just put Vaga. Yeah, you know, Vaga. But no, but, 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 so like I have a company. But that sound good though. So though. the name of my company is Premier Live Experience, and so Premier Live Experience was done for the live entertainment aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to limit it to just concerts because at this point I've I've done other styles of events within the context of Premier Live Experience, but. Mm-hmm. I wanted to create like subdivisions, you know, like I wanted to have like Premier Live Radio, which I did dabble into uh, mm-hmm. a little bit of. I wanted to do Premier Live TV, which is my YouTube channel. And I wanted to do Premier Live Management, which essentially is what I'm doing mm-hmm. with my management company, right? It's okay. time for uh, Premier <laughs> Live uh, Wrestling, right? Yeah, I think that's next. Premier, Ooh. Live, Premier Live Sports or Premier Live Wrestling, you know? But I jumped into Premier Live TV, man. I got I got a cool backstory for that, but I, I got I do got a talk show and I, I format it more as a talk show rather than like a standard podcast. But we're gonna get into all that fun right. stuff, man. We're gonna get into all of that. So tell us, like you so you were born and raised in Fort Worth. Yes. Let's let's let let people, you know, the people audience out there get to know you a little bit more better. Where your upbringing are is from, and then you know your high school days and mm. your struggling days of uh, you know uh, <laughs> young buck out there trying to make a living. So kind of like walk, walk us through, like you know, did you grow up in Fort Worth? Yeah, lived to Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was born and raised in Fort Worth. I've never lived anywhere else. My parents were both born in Mexico, so they both migrated to the states. Uh, my mom, when she left Mexico, my family located to Bakersfield, California, California mm-hmm. and then she ended up in Fort Worth. My dad, I don't know how he just ended up in Fort Worth. They met, they actually met at a show because uh, my uncles used to have a regional band that were that was signed. And so uh, that's kind of how the story started with them. And then, you know, they get married. They had two kids, my, my older brother and myself, and... That's it. You know? it. Was that was that part of your like inspiration? Like you know, your mom and dad met at the show, uh, you and know, you kind of become the person that, <laughs> that does, does the all shows. the shows. And that's how, yeah, man. That, I mean, did you like it? Just resonated with you, like, well, that's man, how I actually, do- I met my wife actually at a show. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah I met my wife at wow. a show too. It's like kind of like uh, history repeating itself, but. Um, you know, I would say that like me, like born and raised in Fort Worth, my I didn't really consider myself musically inclined or like inspired by my family i didn't feel like i grew up in a family of music Mm -hmm. because that was just not something that was prominent even though they were it was in front of me you know and i talked about the festival you know i named my festival after my mom's record shop so my mom was an independent record shop owner from the time i was born to about 96 97 she owned a record shop in North Fort Worth, the Stockyards. Wow. So what she was the name of it? Central Popular, Central Popular, okay. to, 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 to make it, you know, Americanized, right? But she ran in movies, like Blockbuster used mm-hmm. to do back then, and she only did, Amer- she did American titles and, you know, Mexican titles, but she only sold Spanish music. Okay. So in terms of entrepreneurship, like, you know, I saw, you know, a woman, a female, in the 80s, 90s, run a successful business for over 10 years. And, you know, uh, her being a Mexican immigrant at that, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I, didn't, I never correlated it with anything that I did in regards to my entrepreneurship or the seeds being planted, like, because it was normal to me. Mm-hmm. Like, now that I look back on it, I'm like, wow, you know, I spent the first 11, 12 years of my life and, and you know, being around a self-employed parent, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, being in front of, uh, being mm-hmm. around a self-employed um, woman, you know, that had her own business and that was selling music and that was, uh, that was in, in I was around music. You know, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's just inspired you, you know, listening to it all the time and being around it and you wanted to, like, be part of the music. Um, I mean, in a sense, you know, but, like, I, I, I'm one of the few people, like, you know, obviously we'll get to the YouTube channel here in a little bit, but I grew up listening to Spanish music. And I knew Spanish before I knew English. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I know both worlds, and I'm very sound in both worlds. So when you go to my YouTube channel, I might interview Jay Prince on one interview, which I do have an interview with Jay Prince. And then I might interview, mm-hmm. you know, Chris Perez or A.B. Quintanilla, which is, like, Selena's family. Mm-hmm. And I know exactly what the hell I'm talking about on both interviews. You know what I mean? I could interview Fredo Bang and then interview Pita Studio. I could interview, you know, fucking... Bone Thugs and Harmony mm-hmm. and interview Intocable and like it's very rare to find someone that could do both worlds like that. That's you know? awesome, man. Congratulations to you, Doc. Um, that that with that said, you know, um, your latest interviews are uh, by the way, Paul Wall, mm-hmm. Dizzy Wright, 
you know, how was that experience? And obviously, you're in wrestling, big time wrestling. We're going to talk about that after. Yeah, we yeah. have a little segment called Trash Shock, which, uh, <laughs> which is our sports section. So we're going to talk about that and, and that. But um, let me ask you this. So you, so you grew up and you walking us through, like, you know, your, your childhood. Now you're, like, you know, in high school. Now you want to do your own uh, well, little you, business, you know, or you want to go and work for somebody. What made you decide to go not work for somebody and go work for yourself? Well, you know, going back to the question about how I grew up. So, like, uh -huh. I, I ended up in middle school. So I grew up in North Fort Worth, Diamond Hill, to be exact. Mm -hmm. So um, when I grew up in Fort Worth, I mean, growing up in Diamond Hill, like, again, you know, like, I, I fell in love with hip-hop pretty early on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would say that, you know, as much as I don't credit MC Hammer for, like, my initial, like, like for rap music, he, you know, it was what, what was on the radio at the time, Vanilla Ice, uh, MC Hammer. There used to be a channel called The Box, Channel 99, where people could order music videos. Mm -hmm. MTV was prominent at the time, so that's what was in front of us. But it wasn't until I heard Tupac, uh, Brenda's Got a Baby. That was actually the first, first song with substance, and really the first song that I could really say that that's my favorite song. And I became in love with rap, and I became fascinated with it. My older brother, who's six years older than me, he was a big fan of the Ghetto Boys. So, you know, he would anything my brother listened to, because we were really into, like, West Coast hip-hop, Dr. Dre, Stoop Dogg, Easy e Bone Thugs and Harmony. Even though Bone was from Cleveland, they were associated with Easy e mm -hmm. So we... All the NWA, yeah, the whole anything, thing. Yeah, anything that came out of that okay. whole family tree. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, gotcha. like what, whatever branches came out of that, mm -hmm. that big oak, <laughs> right? Like, uh, I became a fan of. And by the time I get to, you know, fifth grade, you know, I, I knew lyrics inside out from, like, Too Short. So, you know, I was going to school rapping Too Short lyrics. And, you know, when I get to middle school at this point, there was, like, a... Um, like a surge of like Southern hip hop, you know, and in specific, it was No Limit Records at the time, you know, No Limit Records, Master P started becoming really prominent, which is funny because a lot of people now, like I'll have people that like compare me to like Master P in regards to entrepreneurship, even though I've never reached his level by any stretch of the imagination, right? But uh, I became just a big fan of Master P, of No Limit Records. And so by the time I get to eighth grade, when I'm going into eighth grade, you know, I have, the merchandise, I bought the No Limit pendant. Like, if you go to my eighth grade uh, middle school picture uh -huh. from each of middle school, I'm wearing a No Limit chain, as are all the people, all my friends, because I let them all wear my chain nice. for the photo. <laughs> uh, but when I went to school, man, I just, I went and I and I had rehearsed a bunch of No Limit records, like a bunch of the, the, the CDs that they had put out, because there was a period of time from the summer of the seventh grade to the eighth grade where these guys back in the day, if you're not familiar with No Limit, no, I'm not, because I came in 2001, and then I fell in love with hip-hop from, like, 2002. Um, we had some hip-hop back home. I'm from Pakistan originally. Gotcha. I moved, migrated here in 2001, and I fall, I fall in love with hip-hop, like, between 2001 and all the way now, like, just educating myself on mm -hmm. the whole thing. Um, now I know a bunch of artists, and I follow a lot of bunch of artists. But, yeah, from that era, I mean, we just barely were getting MTV so they weren't playing like you know straight up hip hop back back uh, home. They were like more Michael Jackson, gotcha. you know, yeah, more like, like you know mainstream. pop or mainstream. mainstream yeah, you know, sure. they weren't playing that uh, hip hop or you know it was uh, tough for people who didn't even like relate to it, you know. But yeah, go on, go ahead. So I think the thing about No Limit Records, you know, Master P, like they revolutionized. Uh, really, they revolutionized a lot, but specifically with hip hop. He was like really the first major independent. Uh -huh. So he was independent and he the way he he would distribute his physical CDs like from the packaging, the packaging on the, in the stores they they were like they weren't the standard jewel cases that you would uh -huh. see on the shelves. They were all colored. So like it would be like a digi pack and like one would be orange. The next week it'd be red. Oh yeah, I remember we those days because yes. I was working in liquor store when I first came yeah. over. Here. It'd be selling out there, man. <laughs> yeah, you, you would see that so, out of trunk. So out I would, I would no, but these were in, in retail. Yeah. These were in Best yeah. Buy and everything. Yeah. And whenever you would buy an album, he would have a catalog inside of his album pr promoting all his future projects. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like they'd have dates, and you would open the CD, and basically every CD he would sell would have twenty titles coming soon. So we, every <laughs> Tuesday, because the music used to come out on Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, me and my brother would go buy the new No Limit title. Mm -hmm. So between seventh and eighth grade, we bought everyone imaginable. I mean, you're talking about 
Cain and Abel, Mia, Mia X, you know, uh, Skullduggery, Mac, you know, Big Ed, you know, everybody that was on that label at the time, Silk the Shocker, C Murder, True, uh, I went and I bought their titles or my brother bought their titles and I would listen to their music and then I just remember one of the songs on the Cain and Abel album, uh, Am I My Brother's Keeper, they had the line where they were like something about Lorenzo. Well, my real name's Lorenzo. Mm-hmm. So I wrote it down and I started rehearsing it. And next thing you know, it like, because I had such a range of music, because I, I fell in love with Tupac, and then I was a big LL Cool J fan, mm-hmm. which are two completely different types of artists, and then No Limit. So whenever I... And then all your, like, Mexican heritage. Oh, uh, and then all yeah, my Spanish, yeah, 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 and so those bookies like, and fucking, yeah, yeah everything else, right? Yeah. Miller and or whatever. But <laughs> when I went to middle school, I finally show up, and I started writing music, all, and I was just rewriting the lyrics from the No Limit stuff, because... It was more, not to take anything away from them, but they were very entry-level rappers. Like, they, a lot of them, they didn't, you know, they didn't really have a lot of, there wasn't a lot of pizzazz to their rhyming style. Mm-hmm. You know, it was real, a, you know, right to the point, right to the point, right to the point. So it was easy to digest, and it was easy to emulate. So when I get to middle school, eighth grade, I'm like, ah, oh, I wrote all these songs, and then I was telling everybody I was a rapper now, and I was like, yeah, what the fuck ever. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then uh, and then my okay. friend, my friend Stephanie Salinas, mm. It's like, ah, look, you wrote a song. And then she's like, let me have that song. And I would, like, man, I was just weird, man. I was different. Like, I would literally write down a track listing on my piece of paper, and I would say, like, this is a CD I'm going to write. This is the music I'm going to put out. And she happened to pass it along to a security guard at the middle school. And the, uh, Miss Ray Von Wong could be in her hand. It, well, it ended up in her hands through a coach or whatever. But I was a troublemaker in school. Long story short, she proposed to me that if she could talk to the principal, or she talked to the principal before she talked to me, if she could keep me out of trouble for six weeks, because uh-huh. at the time I, was the, I had the most infractions in school because uh-huh. I was expelled from school in seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth grade. So if she could keep me out of trouble, she told the principal, for six weeks, she would take me to the recording studio because her cousin owned a recording studio. And I'm oh, how grade. cool is that? Yeah, man, so I stayed out of trouble. You know, and I stayed, out of, trouble. I stayed out of trouble. And, and had it not been for her coming in, at that specific time, I don't know if it would have happened the way it happened or how soon it happened. But the first time I went into a recording studio, I was 13 years old. And probably about a week before I went, you know, basically it was presented to me like, hey, if you stay out of trouble, she says she's going to take you to the studio. Wow. And wow. I'm like, all right, well, I was out of trouble. But I'm telling all my friends at school, like, yo, yeah, I'm going I'm to I'm go to the studio. <laughs> you want to be part of my rap group? Yeah. And, like, and like, it was all these non-rapping ass dudes that were like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. And then nobody mm-hmm. showed up. Yeah. And I ended up going with a guy that was a non-rapping ass guy nonetheless. Mm-hmm. But I just didn't want to go alone. Mm-hmm. And yeah, October 23rd, 1998 was the first time I ever went to the recording studio. It was, it was on the east wow, side. Man. It was on the east side of Fort Worth by Polytech on, on a street called Avenue H. With the by uh, with the guy that owned the studio by the name of JJ Snow, and I was wearing a shirt because back in the day they used to have like these parody shirts, right? I remember exactly what I was wearing. I was wearing a black shirt. Remember back in the day there was this movie called Men in Black, mm-hmm. but it was PIB. I was wearing a pimpin' black shirt. You know oh, what I'm saying? Wow, okay. So like I, I remember it like yesterday because it, it was a day that changed my life. You know what I'm saying? Because when I really went there, cool, man. when I went there is like I know nobody at 13 years old, at least not at my school, which was my reality was around it. Wow. So I knew it was possible. Uh, so you you know what? You had no thoughts of like working for nobody. <laughs> after that, no, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. That. After that, I was like, no, I know what I want to do because yeah. of course when you're younger. That's your passion. When you're younger, like, you know, you you know, you want to play baseball, you want to play basketball, and you start mm-hmm. realizing, man, there's people that are just naturally gifted and they're better right. than you in those areas. So when I got to like sixth grade, I was like, yeah, I want to be a youth counselor. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be a counselor. And then... I'm talking like this in sixth grade. Like I might have said I wanted to be a commentator, like a sports commentator was the mm-hmm. only other thing I wanted to be or an editor. Uh, but when I got to that, I was like, this is what I'm going to do. And I instantly went and got all my clothes airbrushed with the name Smooth. And I got my, my hats embroidered with the name Smooth. How old are you at this point? 13 still. Wow. And my mom and my dad are thinking I'm fucking crazy. They're like, what are you doing? Like, why are you, mm-hmm. ch- why are you changing everything? Like, and and they they after a while they started going okay maybe maybe this is something that's serious. Mm-hmm. I don't think they really understood what I was eventually going to go do. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's kind of how it started. But anyways, I ended up getting a job because to fast forward, I got a job when I was fifteen. 
my brother was working at Jack in the Box. That was my first job. And then... Um, was it the last one? That was the last one? No, I took a few more jobs okay. after that, for sure. <laughs> okay. No, but Jack in the Box was the first one. It was... Yeah. Uh, and I just started getting my own money, and, and I would always try to raise money to to go to the studio again. You yeah, know that's I, awesome, I, I didn't want to hit up J.J. Snow again because I felt like... Yeah. I because I, the, the part I left out in the story when I went to the studio was I completely shit the bed when I got there because I didn't know what I was doing. Oh wow! So he's like rap on the spot, and I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And Sound then, like me on the first day over here. Right? Yeah, right, Jerry. <laughs> and then and then the non rapping ass guy that I brought with me decides to be courageous enough to rap, and he That's decides awesome. to fucking. No, it wasn't awesome. He he was courageous enough. <laughs> courageous to get, part. Courageous part. He awesome. was courageous enough to get on the mic. <laughs> In the hood, <laughs> in Eastside Fort Worth, and rap like some he's a Mexican kid yeah, at that, nice. and just start rapping some three six uh, three six mafia lyrics, oh, and he's no. just dropping the N word, 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 N word, and they're like, yo, what the fuck oh, are you doing? Like, because they knew he was soft too, you know mm. what I'm saying? Like, so it was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so wow, uh, but it was funny when yeah. I look back on it. But at the time, it petrified me because I was like, I don't want to go back and embarrass myself. So when mm -hmm. I was working at Jack in the Box. There was this guy that would always come to the drive and always order the same goddamn chicken sandwich. Mm -hmm. But this motherfucker sounded like, you know, those uh, those late night radio uh, guest hosts that sound like they're horning on the yeah, fucking radio. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, what? yeah let me you. get that chicken sandwich. <laughs> yeah, make sure you put cheese on that. Right. <laughs> so so I found out the dude owned the studio, though. Oh, wow. OK. And and it was right here. It was back in uh, North Fort Worth right there off of. Uh, That's your eye. That's your eye for like catching talent, bro. Nah, yeah, you didn't not, realize no, it. My brother, you no, my brother tipped me on it. He's like, yo, you know the guy oh, that comes in order, the horny guy that owns the chicken sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, uh, <laughs> because funny. he was making fun of him. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, you know you own the studio. So I hit him up when the next time I caught him through the drive-thru, I was like, yo, I heard you own the studio. And this is right here off of uh, Beach. Okay. It was on Beach. Oh, North, right there North on Beach. Uh, 820 and Beach. No, the Beach, right. Yeah, yeah there was like a, right there, a gas station. Yeah. And, uh, That's the only Jack in a Box open on Christmas every time. Oh, yeah. Every time. Well, no, I so, caught him and, I, and I, so. I hit him up to go to the studio, man. And like, long story short, man, like, I, I, I rounded up another rap group mm -hmm. and we all went and he was trying to charge me an outrageous amount of money for the age that I was. And long story short, man, I, I ended up. Finding a way, I didn't. I ended up not working with him, but I ended up going back to JJ, and we just started recording music. And from there, it was like it was on, bro. I like, feel like you're you have a long um, there's story, a more, yeah, there's and there's a lot, a lot more. more. We probably gonna have to do another session of this, yeah, yeah. at Session Studios, you know. Uh, but fast forward, your first break. Uh, well, man, this is crazy again because now it kind of correlates to the high school stuff. We started selling CDs in high school. But I was always the one out of the group. Like, I had a group of five guys. Not, no correlation to the restaurant, right? Uh, but I had a group of five guys that we were, we, it was all of us, and it didn't last. Like, mm -hmm. I think we started the group in February, and by the end of the year, it was just me. I was mm -hmm. the youngest one in the group, but I was the decision maker. And everything fell on my shoulders. And everything, and like, I, I, I don't know if I made up a story to, like, get them motivated, but them guys didn't want it like I did. Mm -hmm. Flat out. It's obvious. They never make music now. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just the way it is, man. You know, and it, I mean, I learned a lot within mm -hmm. that. But I just can I just started producing music. I started putting it out. I started selling it, and I was not good. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like I was I had no idea what I was doing. I was self taught. I wasn't naturally gifted. I wasn't one of those guys that could just pick up the mic and start freestyling. Like I mm -hmm. really had to learn the craft, and I learned a lot from watching uh, VH1 and just watch being on the internet watching mm -hmm. videos. So I would say the first real break I had. It's hard because it depends on what context. Uh -huh. The first time I ever performed was, in a sense, you would say that was a break because I hadn't, you know, I performed the first time technically was at a high school. Okay. At a, 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 it was a Mexican kid performing at a Black History Month, which is weird, right? Mm -hmm. But I performed, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And I did it and, and it was cool, but I didn't know what I was doing. And that was with the group. And so when you rap with the group, you could sometimes use their whatever to mask your whatever mm -hmm. right so it wasn't until i got it on my own which ironically i was at a lakers game i went to go see them play the dallas mavericks i'm a big shaquille o'neal fan but i was and i was a really big kobe bryant fan as well and rest I went, in peace i went to the game and i was wearing an airbrushed lakers warm-up with my name on the back of it which by the way was badass and 
I ran into a comedian on the way in, and he's like, I like your jacket. And I happened mm-hmm. to have a copy of my CD printed up, and I gave him one. Well, bro reached out to me. I'm still friends with this guy to this day. His name is Carlos Cody. And um, he reached out to me, and he said, hey, man, would you want to you know, perform at my comedy show, to close up my comedy show? Okay. And I'm, I've never really performed. That's in L.A.? No, that's, no, no, this LA? isn't, no, this is Dallas. Oh, Dallas, okay. Right, this is, Dallas. Fort, yeah, he was having a show in Fort okay. Worth. I was like, all right, cool, shit, I'll, I'll do it. I had no idea what I was doing. And the Where one, was the performance at? It was in North Fort Worth. Oh, gotcha. It was in North Fort Worth. I did it. Anyways, I did it. It gave me an opportunity. And I remember I ran off stage, but I, I, did, I performed, but it was a break. And it was, it was something that made me realize, like, okay, you know what? You can do it yourself. I could do this. And that was the first time I did it by myself. Yeah. And I, I didn't, you know, and then one thing about comedy too, man, like I respect those guys so much. And like, I was- That's a hard profession, man. Because you learn the craft of like um, showmanship. Mm-hmm. You know, like to me, if, if you're a real performer, a real rap, it doesn't matter if you're a rap artist or any type of artist, study how co- comedians craft their sets, how they transition from one joke to the next joke, how you, you'll know instantly whether or not you're having a good show or a bad show when you're a comedian. But I got an opportunity to close out shows and meet people like Michael Blackson, you know, whenever they were doing the, the rounds over here in Fort Worth at Vipers in Riverside. You know, you're talking about this guy's one of the biggest comedians in the world now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I was closing out shows for them then. Wow. So uh, those were breaks. I mean, I, I don't well, know. How old you were at that point? I was probably 17, 18. You know wow. That's still, man. That's yeah. No, badass. I started, yeah, I started young. So, I mean, it was just like that. And then I started my website in 2002. Started getting traffic in 2003, mm-hmm. 2004, and those were the those were like little things that were happening that were starting to make me feel like okay, this is a profession. I pr- I pr- pressed my first official album in 2004, I guess if that's what you want to call it, right? And I started gaining confidence. And at the time, back in the day, they used to let you consign CDs in the stores. Okay. So you could go to Sam Goody, or you can go to a store and go, hey, I'm gonna give you 10 CDs contract them, tell them how much you want per CD. They'll tell you how much they're going to sell it for. So we could tell our fans or our people, hey, our CD's available in Sam Goody. Go check us out. Mm-hmm. The average person does not know how that works. Mm-hmm. So like if, you know, you're a kid from Pakistan that just mm-hmm. comes over in 2002, you don't know that I just oh, no. contracted I couldn't them. even order Taco Bell, man. Yeah. I'm trying to learn English over here at that point. No, but, <laughs> if, like, but, but if you see the on, if you see a CD. My brother had to do it. <laughs> but if you see a CD on the shelf, you yeah, automatically no, go, oh shit, that guy's a real, like he's a big artist. Yeah. You don't fucking know that I'm no. fucking living with my mom at Mm-mm. home or anything like that. You know what no. I'm saying? Like, uh, so, you know, that should just, how it went. You know what I mean? And then from there, you know, uh, there was little things that just happened, but I would say as my name started growing and people started acknowledging me and I started getting recognized and getting media placements and stuff like that, um, I wasn't getting a lot of shows. I wasn't getting booked a lot. So I started doing it on my own and that's where everything changed. Cause the and moment- that's when, when, how old are you at that point? I'm 22 years old. At that point. Okay, at, that's, that's 2007. Awesome. That's That's still early in age, man. Yeah, it was early in age, but I realized that I'm not... like I already knew prior to that, because I was doing social media management, social media marketing before I realized that it was social media marketing or social Mm -hmm. media management. My mom bought me a computer in 2002, uh, going into 2003, and I begged her to buy it for me. She bought it for me for Christmas, and I literally got the internet set up. At the time, it was still dial-up. Maybe ESL had just came out, and... 2002, uh, right? DS, I said ESL. DSL. DSL. DSL, 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 well, yeah, DSL. and all that, you know, so yeah, but I, but DSL. Yeah, DSL, my bad. Uh-huh. But I used to I used to get on, there was a lot of online communities like Mi Gente and C-Pixel, and I would get on these websites, and I would tell everybody, hey, log on to my, my website. Mm-hmm. And I used to have a guest book. So I would, what? like, let's just say Jerry, for example, I'd be like, hey, Jerry, get on my page, you know, and then- MySpace. Yeah, well, MySpace wasn't around until 2004. Okay, gotcha. I was way ahead of MySpace. I got you. But I got on MySpace when the wave started. I got you. That's what was like, like but I was when still, I caught it. Yeah, you know? but I was still working. But see, here's the thing. I was working at Jack in the Box when my website launched. Okay. So when I was, you know, promoting, so when I had my website, I would, I would wear a hoodie that said smoothvega.com on the front mm-hmm. of my hoodie while I was on the clock. And then when I would give people their food, I would write my website on the back of the receipts. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So Hustling I, out there, man. 
That's awesome, dude. I mean, you had that marketing. You know, you you were already marketing genius. I was like, a, no, I was since a fucking, thirteen. Like, I was you know, a fucking you promoter, and I didn't realize I was you a just you were just doing it. It's you automatically. know what I'm saying? That that is natural talent that came to you. You know, promoter and uh, performer and entertainer. Well, you know, but, it's initiative. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a want. You know, because yeah. I know that I wanted to be heard, and I know that I wanted to do this. So, you know, you're either gonna be a go getter or watch. Everybody else be a go-getter. You know what I'm saying? Like, which one do you want to be? I mean, be? You can, you you know can, like, you're going to learn one side of the business. You're going to have one natural talent of the side of the business. You're going to be a great artist and lyric, you know, write songs for other people or whatnot. But there will be another side of the business, uh, like, you know, promoting and all that, that you actually have to learn and work hard at. Bro, and you, you did it the reverse way. Nobody could understand. Nobody locally at the time, because there was a lot of my counterparts that were much more mm -hmm. you know, skilled than I was at the time. Um, and they were more advanced than me at the time, you know. Um, I'm talking about musically, that mm -hmm. is, right? They could not grasp and, uh, and wrap their head around the fact that here's this guy that for whatever reason, on paper, when you size him <laughs> up, if we're looking at this like if it's sports, right, this guy's slow, awesome, he's man. not that good, you know, I can outrun him here, here, yeah. and here, but how is he getting more accolades or mm -hmm. more traction than me? It's because I fucking wanted it more than yeah. you guys. I don't um, give a fuck how good you guys were. Y'all exactly. didn't want it as much as I did, and it's proven. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when you think about it, when specifically with the website, I would spend hours, and I mean fucking hours. I was in chat rooms. I was, I was on social sites. I was connecting with people all across, you know, Texas. I was in website forums from Camillionaire to like these boxing sites. So by the time we get to 2005, 2006, my website had garnered a lot of traffic, a wow. volume of traffic. And when we get to 2007, you're right. I already, I didn't realize that I was already a natural promoter, but everything that I had studied up to that point, whether it be VH1 behind the music or my personal influence, which is like Vince McMahon, mm -hmm. Oscar De La Hoya, Bob Arum, these guys that like revolutionized their, their respective businesses, specifically Vince McMahon, who, mm -hmm. in my opinion, revolutionized live touring. You know, mm -hmm. there's not a fucking business in the world oh like the WWE God. that can route and do a tour 200 dates of the year and average no less than five, 6,000 attendees across the world. That's so crazy, time. isn't it? That's so amazing. I though. mean, and, and he revolutionized pay-per-view. He yeah. started pay-per-view. Yep. Like, that is fucking unheard of. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? Like, uh, so I, I, was, I was naturally into these things. I was already a pro wrestling fan, and I, I, I would watch, I would look forward to watching VH1 behind the music and, seeing how the process was. Mm -hmm. And I would like, as fucked up as it sounds, I enjoyed hearing the bad mm -hmm. as well. Like, oh man, you know, this guy was a, Kurt Cobain was just a fucking awesome guy, but he couldn't, couldn't get off this and he couldn't do that. And he shot himself. Like, like you start hearing these cautionary tales and you're like, whether or not you realize it, it plants that bug in your head. Like, that's what not to do. Mm -hmm. That's what you shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, as much as I love Tupac, you know, he was a, he was ahead of his time, but he he passed at 25 years old. Mm -hmm. I've outlived Tupac by 11 years. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think everybody in this room has outlived Tupac, right? Mm -hmm. It's fucking crazy. You That's know, so funny. But you get to that point where you're like, all right. So I started studying. So yeah, I would say those were. The things. I know that's a that's, long answer. But no, I'm that's you. that's a great answer actually. That's an amazing ass answer. I wanted to know a little bit of a. Uh, Mr. Smooth Vega, you know, I wanted to get to know you personal level, man. Um, fast forward, let, let's just skip some little bit of like all the medium uh, details and stuff like that. And then now you're, um, you know, you have great guests on your show um, and art of like actually even interviewing somebody and having like, you know, uh, great artists and, and great people from uh, WWF, WWE. Error. Um, I think you uh, didn't. Didn't you like did the Jake the Snake recently? Yeah, yeah, just, just and just then you just, had another. Pe uh, is it Undertaker? You have done Undertaker. Nah, nah, I done yeah, it. you haven't done that one. Hopefully one day. Hopefully one day. <laughs> so <laughs> which uh, which uh, wrestlers you have already interviewed? I, I've interviewed a handful of guys, but uh, definitely Jake the Snake Roberts, and then mm -hmm. a few other guys that are just kind of like you know you'd have to be a wrestling fan to know who I'm talking about. Otherwise, they're gonna be like who? You oh know? yeah, no, I'm a big time wrestling fan. So. Yeah. Um, so, and then you have your, all your, you know, artists that obviously that those are your coworkers and your colleagues and industry people. Mm -hmm. um, so let me ask you this, the best interview and the worst interview. 
Uh, let's go. Let's go with the worst one. First. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> let's let's start over. How did I even get into interviewing? Let's just do that, and then talk. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a quick story, real okay. quick, just because I don't want to go like, where, what are you? Like, yeah. How I even got into interviewing was mm-hmm. 2015, 2016. Mm-hmm. I started planting the seeds and said I want to start my own podcast slash okay. online, but I wanted to market it as a radio station. Okay. Like, but it was you know, anyways, didn't work out. And then I tr- I took a snap at doing like I was trying to do it and finally I said like, you know what I'm gonna I, I ended up connecting with one of the guys on the Joe Budden podcast and he had came out he did some stuff with me and then he was like you should really do it if you're thinking about doing it mm-hmm. did it I had all these relationships and resources that I had accumulated from the years of me being a mm-hmm. promoter and doing tours so I started doing my own show started doing it first few months I did it I did it self produced I did a few with T Ride by, by the way I used mm-hmm. to, I did actually did some at his house. Those were never really that good. No, no, not not not, not T rides. I'm talking about the whole episodes in that time I thought frame. You're putting in T rides. No, no, T ride was cool. I'm the audio. I'm talking about the ones that we did. It was early. It was, yeah, it, 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 it was, just it was like, early oh, in the day. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. yeah, you know we're. Yeah, still, I get it. Because you're gonna even now oh, yeah. you're, you're gonna probably look back on this interview and like. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You, know, oh, yeah. you, you, know, you would see at my first interview, you would be like, "What the hell are you doing?" Bro? Yeah, yeah. You, you just get better with time, yeah, yeah. but but when but a production team took notice of what I was doing. Uh huh. And then like let's let's do video with it, and that's whenever we did it. And I knew those guys, and they're mm-hmm. phenomenal, and that's why I, I I give them all the credit in terms of the production value. We're gonna go into all of that. Um, we're gonna pause for a little bit. We're gonna have our artists perform here. Oh shit! And gonna... uh, let him do our little segment that is open mic. So with that said, we have Treehead in the house. <laughs> What's up, my man? I know you've been just sitting there absorbing and listening and everything else. You know, how you doing, brother? Man, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm just enjoying you guys' conversation. Okay, okay. And then uh, my man right here, on uh, your producer, can you shout out to him too? Or you can come grab a mic, brother. Yeah, there's one mic over there. Um, and then, Yeah, you can get on a headset or something, you know. Um, since we have both of y'all in, or if you want to be in the camera, you can be right here. Just come around while I'm talking to... Uh, Free head over here. So my man, so um, forward, yes, natural, sir. local artist. That's what we like. Uh, we like to invite you. Thank you so much for coming here. You know, your time is important. Uh, we value your time, you know. So I'm looking forward to your performance for sure, for sure. So, but tell us a little bit about what do you do? Like, you know, what kind of music? And then also, like, you know, if you can shout out, like, you know, your uh, platforms and all that good stuff before you perform. And then we'll listen to you after that, brother. And then definitely, you know, Mr. Producer also, you know, okay. plug in. So, so yeah, I'm I'm, I'm P. Will. P. Will, how yes, right? Sir. You can find me on Instagram at chillpill underscore P. Will or on uh, Facebook at Pierre Williams. Okay, okay. Um, so, tell me about your music, man. What man, you do? I'm a uh, hip hop artist. I uh, really like to consider myself. I don't consider myself a rapper. I'm more of an artist. Cause I'm artist? Kind of, yeah. Okay, you don't have a different genres that you explore? Yeah. yeah you yeah, have yeah. R&B and rap and then kind of like pop old school, yeah, new school, yeah. all that good stuff, you know? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I like Anderson Peak. I don't know if you Anderson listen. Pack. Pack, Anderson Pack, Pack, yeah. I love his music. He's dope, you know, he's he's dope. dope man. Um, yeah, so we're looking forward to it. So where can people find you? Man, y'all can find me on... Uh, Facebook and on social media at uh, Treehead Pharaoh. I'm the only Treehead, so when you type in Treehead, it's gonna no, pop. It'll up. just <laughs> pop up everywhere. Yes, sir. All right. And you also asked me what what I, what do I do? Uh, this is really kind of crazy that I'm sitting here listening to uh, Smooth Vega because mm-hmm. I'm pretty much just you know trying to work my way up and what he's doing. So I'm mm-hmm. just you know. Trying That's to the whole like show him. about man. We just since mm-hmm. we're just trying to put the information out there. Right. And, and you know. So tell us what what so what what you do right now besides the rapping, you know? Uh I'm a, a promoter. I book shows, the treehouse. Okay. okay. Me, okay. Know, um okay. I'm getting into management as well, okay. you know, managing P, you know, okay. the producer coming up. So Okay. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So I wasn't sure who's who's the producer, who's the manager. <laughs> <laughs> who's the producer? Who's All right, producer? cool. All right, cool, cool. All right, man. I'll take it away, brother. You All know. All right, let's get it. Rolling with me, Treehead, Pharaoh, that's all I need, man, see what I mean, is this all that I need, she ain't believing it was 
what she see, but she gon' believe in me. In a straight up G trip space style. Can you come and follow me? Yeah. Shout it, we getting lost <laughs> and I find honey and they fucking with no dummies, baby girl. Throw in my way, you just might be the one for me. Thigh slim waist and that ass super stunning. Cut it, her chips on way. She ain't worried about no money. Underground queen gripping pot and staying switch and flooded. Realizing that you played and now you hating that you done it. Can't get back up in the picture now that ain't a for discuss. Not trying to front. See your side in public, probably think we're stubborn. Chip, 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 chip. See what I mean about these lost dreams. Is this some other stuff? Baby, girl, some finer things. Just wanna get away and do the other things. And if you want to, then we can lay up on the beach. See, I'm just here for you. She only had that. I'ma show a tree show Say she looking for some sex I'ma be sent her with dreams She say she looking for the best Pulling me under her sheets He quit like the Rougarou But speak just like running B And she love our gold She can't understand the motherfucking word we speak See what I mean Is this all that I need She believing in what she see But she gon' believe in me And straight up G Trip space style King come and follow me Shout it we get lost in our dreams With that hot body uh -huh. And if I get it She is gone And you will not forgotten yeah. All my young niggas yeah. Pippin' just like Scotty Yeah, yeah, yeah Young yeah. nigga Got them diamonds yeah. In his teeth They gon' shine They gon' blind They gon' bling I paid a grip For this I style Cub leans I'm, I'm suited up Get looted up Shit what you mean She at the house She seeing shit She never seen Young nigga so clean Thought I was With the money team That paper but now my shit turn candy green It's in me, Yaki, y'all on me or to Pimp C Yo, Pimp ain't got the diamonds in his team They gon' shine, they gon' blind, they gon' bling She fuckin' with me cause I'm flying, and I'm clean And I keep that this shit, y'all on me just like Pimp C Yo, Pimp ain't got them diamonds in his team I drank on ice when I'm running to the cream We smokin' sticky, icky, and yeah, that shit too weak That these haters wanna be there now the world's about to see Young Space ain't 1G Thought I was lost but the other Pharaohs found me And now they unleashing a beast Got a young nigga pimpin' just like Scotty Verse 2, round 4 and she can't keep quiet She love that dick that I give her say it's hard stopping I got some damnation hoes out here getting spotted She so elite because she catching all my damn droppers The further I dig deep in her I can't tell nobody And then she said, yo Pharaoh, I got so many problems I told her more money, more problems, keep that pussy popping Yo, baby got the diamonds in the team They gon' shine, they gon' blind she fucking with me cause I'm flying and I'm clean And I keep that this shit out on me just like Pimp C Yo, Pimp it got them diamonds in the sea I drank on ice when I'm running to the cream We smoke the sticky icky and that shit too weak And I keep that this shit out on me just like Pimp C Pouring up all the things that make her wander Doing exotic things for me to keep that warm Tell her I'm a player, man, pussy assassin How you know that 
just really your woman, ain't playing no games, you just really fucking. These niggas think they really stunt, but they out here front. SSA got this whole dumping, man, this bitch bumping. Say they get money, but these bitches can't get shit from it. Yo, they ain't got the diamonds in this team. They gon' shine, they gon' die, they gon' win. She fucking with me, cause I'm flying and I'm clean. And I keep that in see y'all know me just like Pimp See you. Some thoughts, and I seen so many things. Have you ever been lost in some deep fucking sleep? Got you saying, What the fuck to a living lifeless being? Don't know what I mean, but I'ma show you overnight. Wanna live your dreams, and you wanna do it right, though. If it's alright, yeah, just for one night, yeah, I'll bring a light, yeah, dead overnight, glow. You know exactly who we are, bodies, diamonds, and this go. Did these so she throw it back? Had to dub on her like that. I make her sweat when she yeah. lay at. And it started when hey. she said, Pharaoh, go on and fucking roll. Go ahead and let our private post a motherfucking toast. I yeah. didn't know I was like this. Be real high up the Pharaoh. Your dream will stop when I say so. The guy said, Hi, and I look low. If I get caught red handed, I take a motherfucking pose. Do this all night. Yeah. I bring the light. Yeah. Just for one night. Yeah. Then overnight. If it's alright, if it's alright, if it's alright Just for one night, yeah, that overnight glow Look up deep into them stars, you might just see some shit that glow Darts, I wanna show some shit that they ain't never seen before Fantasies they keep inside and I'ma bring them to life Go involving to another free while trying to tame it to the flow Elevation in my soul and that was my signal for growth Stay in control cause if you don't then your mind is what's getting slow Tell your friends about the God and about my overnight glow Tell your friends about the God and about that overnight glow Good I'm finna roll this good Smoking that odor, so old sour. Hit that dab and flew to Saturn. Can't say my rings don't matter. Can't break this code or this lock sitting at the bottom of my letter. Yeah, nah. Lift my crown up just like a tree. You can call me Pharaoh. Man, on this hoe. Live again on this hoe. Yeah. I be born just to live life in a bin. The last row. Bitch, you can get a taste of this and then a change of life. Change of I life. told you once before, I do this shit from day to night. A whole Pharaoh. Do this all night. Yeah. Bring the light, yeah. just for one night, yeah. that overnight glow. If it's alright, if it's alright, if it's alright, just for one night, yeah. that overnight glow. Look up deep into them stars, you might just see some shit that glow. Darts, I wanna show some shit that they ain't never seen before. Fantasies they keep inside, and I'ma bring them to life. Don't involve to another free while trying to tame it to the flow. Elevation in my soul, and that was my signal for growth. Stay in control, cause if you don't, then your mind is what's getting slow. Tell your friends about the God and about my overnight glow. Show your friends about the God and about my overnight glow. Night Club, y'all. And the videos on YouTube. This, this thing right here. Is, you do that every I got some of my stoners out there. I'm going to do that when they all catch lights. You know what I'm saying? You can't suck it up. Oh, man. Hell of smoke like 420. Backwoods gon' blow plenty. Baby girl say she coming through with about six joints in four minutes. Go and roll some shit. I had ten blunts in four minutes. I get through her with no trippin'. She love to come and fuck with me. I smoke the dang. I don't give a fuck. Let your body feel smoke if you can't get enough. I smoke the dang. I don't give a fuck. And yeah, let we smoke if it's something OG tub. Around my hill, 
just a tree. Flavor show, get it right and hit it right. You know them edibles for show. Non smoking rules for you is that just high go. You put it on the scale. I need this shit to weigh up all right. You got a nasty freak, she wanna smoke and lay up all night. You roll a hell of a blunt, but she love to smoke a pipe front. Back to class while we jam in that super tight. I smoke the day. I don't give a fuck. Let your body feel smoke if it can't get us numb. I smoke the day. It's what I need. Let your body feel small. If it's choking on that green ass mask, the mask is good to me. We hand wash that fire around my hair, cause it's a tree. Just smoke but I'm gonna get you high today. Cause it's Friday. Just smoke it. You ain't got no job. And you ain't got shit to do. <laughs> Purple dream has spoken. Call it poetry and motion. Swimming yeah. through the clouds, super high. I'm flying through the ocean. Fuck it in your system. On another planet when you're stoned. Niggas get the trip. And when they taking grams to the dome. But Pharaoh scientific. Watch another blood. Go get cloned. Leave me alone. Back in my zone. My three wheel call it on. Yeah. Green and some cheese like a pack of all we lies matter. A lot of cabbage on the menu, but I want the cush of black time. Pharaoh. Yeah. What they? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, my job is to get the job done. I bet you be a fan of Treehead when the time's up. On this song, like that right there, then just lined up. And your baby mama snapping me to get shined up. I'm faded with low taper. My mind is on the paper. Just got off the phone with my mom. She said, fuck her, hey. That shit that you can't think of yeah. The music what I'm made for The art is what I'm made of Authentic nigga as fuck What they want from me I don't know I don't know I don't know I'm just a tree Symbol of growth Symbol of growth So let me grow What they want from me I don't know I don't know Symbol of growth, so let me grow. Yeah, them trees gon' grow. I'm leaving my impressions on my hoes. They wanna be just like the road. Can't even drive the boat. They say you gotta go through these people. I find that shit so strange. How another motherfucker tell me where I'm fucking supposed to be. Dedication, motivation, hunger's what they saw with me. Leading this new dynasty might be my new destiny. Got them throwing fish, they stumping kick cause they can't stand this. Really feel some type of way when overseas I'm landing. What they want? Me, I don't know. 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 I'm just a tree. A symbol of growth. Symbol of growth. So let me grow. What they want. Christian, no, cause in that form I beat a Pharaoh. Oh, that flag ain't seen that real. Big spit hedge ain't seen that there. It's 
a nigga in this bitch Put a tree up in this hair Man, how you do that there? Dance, I match them everywhere They love and Pharaoh everywhere Say thank you to the universe What they want Symbol of growth, so let me grow. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go, all man. All right, all right. Man, make sure to follow my Instagram. Yes, sir. Treehead Pharaoh on Instagram and on Facebook. Appreciate you guys and thank you, everybody. Hey, for man. We got some tree in the house. <laughs> And we're riding smooth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Hey, welcome back. Thank you, audience. Hey, follow, follow our artist, Treehead here. He's an amazing, amazing artist here. Uh, but, um, but, man, let's go. Let's so you're go. saying worst interview, best interview. Worst interview, I don't know that I have one. Mm -hmm. But I would say that I could have done better with Chris Cyborg, the MMA fighter. I felt like I could have done better because I wasn't as familiar with MMA okay. as I should have been. And there was a little bit of a language barrier. So that was a little difficult. I don't want to mm -hmm. say it was the worst, but it was definitely not as good as it can be. Mm -hmm. I was a little hard on myself. Got you. My best is yet to come, but I will say that uh, I just interviewed Chris Perez uh, on Friday. And for those that aren't familiar with Chris Perez, in regards to like the, the Hispanic and Mexican culture, I consider him like the closest thing to like Prince Charming. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, he was married to Selena. Uh, he's a Grammy Award winner in his own right, but you know Selena is like our icon. She's up there with Elvis and goddamn Michael Jackson, uh, especially for for you know Mexican culture, 100. you know. 100%. And so um, you know he he was very very transparent, candid, and very um, it was good. good. Yeah, it was very 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 good. I can't wait for it to come out on YouTube. It'll be out here hopefully in the next week or two when it. When it comes right. out, people are going to see. Everybody got to check it out. You know, you got to yeah. go to his uh, you know, YouTube a, channel. Yeah, this will be the first video that I hear him interviews. Premier with. Live <laughs> TV. <laughs> Nothing beats experience. Yes, sir. All right, man. So uh, we're walking through the. So you just recently lit, uh, did the show too, right? Yeah. yeah. How many artists you had on that show? 14. Fort I had 14, which I probably should have had five less than I actually did, but... You know, I never regret anything I do. Everything's a learning experience, right? So mm -hmm. I don't want to say I wish I would have done anything different, but I know what I'm going to do better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, uh, I think just being in that space, being able to do an all-day event, uh, especially in the middle of the summer, you know, in, in, in a new music venue, there's always going to be a learning curve. Uh, but it was hot. It was like mm -hmm. 105 degrees, but that motherfucker felt like mm -hmm. 115. You know what I'm saying? And you start the event at 2 begin a show at three and your headliner doesn't go on until 10 probably could have started it at six or seven and just ran it to mm -hmm. one in the morning but again you live and you learn and uh, I, I don't have any regrets it was a great event but it was that many artists it was a lot of artists but it was also like showcasing a lot of good uh you know regional talent a lot of good independent talent from here mm -hmm. and then also our the national acts as well Oh, that's awesome, man. And then you had a festival? That, well, that's uh, what I was talking about. That was the whole festival thing? Okay, yeah. got you, got you, okay. So what was the name of it? Central so Popular. So everybody it, can follow the festival for the next time. C Central Popular, so it was our first annual, and obviously, you know, like, I've already, like, the next day, I already had the next, the next logo already ready You got the go. dates? Yeah. You got the dates? July 30th of next year. Okay. So there yeah. you go. <clears throat> I had already had it ready prior, but I, I think people weren't prepared for b 2 B. A year in advance, ready? You have to. That's that Vince, that's that that's that's Vince McMahon influence. Yeah. You know where you know as soon as WrestleMania is over, they're already showing the next WrestleMania, or they join the WrestleMania. They're like next year we're coming mm -hmm. to Vegas. It's the same shit, man. You know I have like I, I wrote on I wrote on Instagram because there was a lot of people that were congratulatory and they were giving oh man congrats with you know uh, the success of the event. I don't ever really live in the moment and take it all in because I'm always like reaching for more. Mm -hmm. But I will say that I, I I posted on my Instagram story. I was like, I got Tom Brady mentality. You know, when they ask Tom Brady, "What's your favorite ring?" His answer <laughs> his answer is always the next one. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I felt. Like when you know, I, as as good as this event may have been or may have not been, I'm ready for the next. It remind one. me of Matthew McConaughey quote. You know, my, my best version is not yet. 
here yet. You know, he's keeping working, yeah. and working on the next one. They're always going to get better, next man. One, yeah. You're always going to grow, and that's all you can do. Anytime you, the thing about it is, I, I had I had a conversation with somebody on the way over here, and I was talking about passion. You know, what I'm saying like when you're passionate about something, you really love what you do. Mm -hmm. You're going to find a way to do it. Oh yeah. And 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 I know that sounds real like A B C simple, you know, math whatever. But like the truth is, is uh, when you when you really love what you do, you will find a way to do it. And the thing is, is that people realize that they don't really love this as much as they think they love it. Mm -hmm. They like it. They might like it for the moment, but they're not they're not passionate about it. And someone that's passionate about it will always find a way to not only do it but to continue to do it. Mm -hmm. And then you, you just know? evolve. You Correct. keep evolving. Keep getting better. Um, any small projects coming up here shortly? Um, I mean, I think, anything? I think I don't want to call it a small project, but I think right now, you know, I've, I've been managing an artist by the name of XB Valentine. I started managing mm -hmm. her. We had conversations in December. We, we, and when we got to March, she had, our, basically in February, she signed an agreement. We didn't mm -hmm. announce it till March, but we didn't release her first song till April. So I'm about four months into this project and, um, Man, it's been it's been going really good, man. We we That's awesome, we man. had a goal in mind, and I know this this is this just happened this morning, guys. So like, I, I don't want to sound like we're bragging in any way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. but you know, we have a lot of like songs that we've collected and that we've accumulated that we're gonna put out in the next few weeks. But I said, you know, if you just set a goal, that like a simple goal, it doesn't matter if it's whatever. You, you you'll you'll know what you're what you're aiming mm -hmm. for. Right, you know, what good is having a drive if you don't know where you're going? What good, mm -hmm. is, what good is looking good in a in a car? If you're driving 100 miles per hour and you have no des destination, eventually you're going to run out mm -hmm. of gas. Right. Right? So it, it, it's always easier to know what you're going for. And so with her, I told her, like, I just want to get you to a point where we're, we're grossing X amount of dollars per month, you know, and we're doing it this frequently. It might take, it might take 12 months to do it, but we're going to get to this mm -hmm. point. And today was the first indicator that we're seeing that. You know, she 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 brought in today. I calculated off of like you know, you know, you know, work for hire stuff mm -hmm. like you know features, and then she got booked for a few shows, all paid, and everything was paid. And it was you know, I, my cash app was going today, and I was like really happy for her. Mm. And I was like, you know, the, the number that we had talked about hitting was two thousand a month, mm -hmm. and we and you know it's August third, and we already hit. Over two thousand dollars. Can you we give the doing? claps? Let's <laughs> go. That's awesome, man. And so it's I'm, very inspiring for a new artist, man, coming in. You know, absolutely. You That's know? why I went to the other room because yeah. she, some of that work for higher work she started knocking out today, and I was like, look, you know, like there's the, the, what we discussed happening is mm -hmm. happening. It's happening a lot sooner than we, we predicted, but um, but this is exactly what I meant, you know. But it's also because we know what we're going for. I know what I'm going for. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So um, it makes everything easier, you know, and um, that's kind of where I'm at. But that's been my priority outside of me me doing my own personal brand stuff. I'll, of course, I want to continue to grow my my platform, doing interviews. I do that kind of as I see fit. Um, mm -hmm. Events, I don't know. Like I, I want to do events, but you know, obviously the. COVID stuff is, you know, it's still a real thing. It's so a like, real thing, for sure. We, I don't know where we stand with that. So I don't want to overcommit and go like, hey, I'm about to do this. And then, you know, get derailed. Everything Yeah, it gets down. derailed. Yeah, Because yeah. that's happened. Yeah. Yep. So Last uh, year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, everything yeah. shuts down, man. So yeah. I, I want to just continue to to do my part in any way that I can. And, and you know, hopefully, you know, motivate, inspire, and continue to, like, elevate uh, the scene over okay. here. Okay. And uh, what's is it the same management company name? Um, Everything's under Premier Live. Okay, it is. It is. Okay, Everything cool. Under All Live. right, so uh, we were outside while um, you know Tree was uh, performing and um, uh, watching his uh, performance, and you were uh, talking about the Troy Drive, which is pretty soon. It's about to come. Yeah. Christmas, Thanksgiving yeah. is right around the corner. So <clears> tell <throat> tell us about a little bit of. Uh, uh, that venture that you have and what do you do for the kids yeah, out there? Yeah, man, you know what? I would say that out of all the things that I've done, that's one of the things that gets overlooked about, I feel like gets overlooked a lot is that, you know, not just like the charitable work, but stuff that I've done within the community. Like, I don't know that there's anybody as active as I am in regards to like going to the schools and doing public speaking engagements, whether it be at elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, mm -hmm. You know, there was a point in time even where I don't like really talking about it publicly, but obviously, mm -hmm. you know, just in the context of the conversation where, 
you know, there was people that, like, young kids that passed away, you know, early and didn't have money for funeral expenses, and I would do the fundraisers, and I would raise money to like, pay for their funerals. You know what I mean? That's like, awesome, man. And I've done it more than once. And, you know, I was always taught, you know, never let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. You don't want to talk about it because mm -hmm. it's, you got to be about it. But the one thing about the toy drive stuff is I started doing that, like, in 2008, and I did that. You know, I've done 12 of them, 11 or 12 of them, and, you know, we do different variations of it because... My form and my ideology behind doing the toy drive was always like, you got to make it cool to 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 be to do charity stuff. You got to be mm -hmm. you got to make it cool. Like you, you know, like the average person doesn't think that way. So like, how can we make it cool? How can we, you know, drive people to to donate toys? Give mm -hmm. them an incentive, mm -hmm. so, or 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 help people out. Mm -hmm. So I started doing these toy drives, and I started putting together free concerts, and then I started getting. You know, sponsors. I started getting people that were involved that would contribute. So, you know, I, I the first one that I did that was really well, I did a few that were big early on, but like the one that I did really big was I did one with the Texas Ranger player at the time. His name was Nelson Cruz, and then the next year I did it with Terrell. Owen. Nice man, Nelly. Yeah, 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 Nelly, yeah, yeah, Nelly. Yeah, it was actually his last appearance as a Ranger was with me. Okay. And then after that, we did Terrell Owens the next year. To and we did, the, and at the time, you asked me if I was working, if I took a job. I was actually a store manager at T-Mobile because mm -hmm. I had t taken a job for a while. So T-Mobile had never seen somebody come in and just do this. Like mm -hmm. they, they had nothing to do with it, but they benefited mm -hmm. from it being at the store. And I had Terrell Owens come in. There was a line wrapped around the block. Same thing with Nelly. And then the next year, I just started doing free concerts and free shows and booking artists like Immortal Technique. Or I did some stuff with Trade the Truth. I did some stuff with a few different people. And, you know, uh, like the last one I did was in 2019 because obviously last year I didn't do it. In 2019, I did it with Chris Jericho. Oh, uh, nice. I did it with Chris Jericho. And, uh, man, I, I got the video on my Instagram feed. You can see it was fucking crazy. Six, seven hundred people in a line all with toys that were just donating toys. Super cool, man. And so, you know, we really wanted to kind of start like an angel chief. Uh, like, because, you know, I was donating to like a local, local, uh, like kind of like an orphanage, like a foster home that would, that would basically foster like 300, 400 kids. And it was in Fort Worth and I would always donate to them. But I think the last one I did, you know, I, I didn't get in time and I just started realizing like, you know what, I really want, like, cause what happened in that specific instance is this, this company would take the donations. Mm -hmm. And then I asked them the last time I donated, like, what do you do with the toys that you have duplicates in? Because mm -hmm. they would have the kids come in and they would have it almost like a like a toy store. And on Christmas Day, they let the kids come in and pick whatever toys they want. Mm -hmm. But they're like in every aisle has duplicates. So mm -hmm. what do you do with the duplicates? They're like, well, sometimes we we wait for their birthday, we wait for a special occasion. Like, well, hold up, like mm -hmm. there's other kids. There's kids in the fucking hood. Yeah. There's kids in the fucking na yeah. in the neighborhoods that that don't have this. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck that. Like, I want to use these toys for something yeah. else. So the last time I did it, I just took all my toys to the studio. We put them in the studio at Music and Focus in North Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. and I just put it on the internet, like, yo, if anybody needs, you know, help with Christmas gifts, come by. And I was like, goddamn, like, what is it, uh, the Santa's Little Helpers, the fucking, like an elf. I was giving out <laughs> toys the whole day for two days straight at the studio, man. But we really kind of wanted to establish, like, some form of an angel tree program where people can basically sign up and... You know, maybe we'll do that sooner than later. We'll start planting the seeds for that for the end of the year mm -hmm. where people can sign up, you know, and give us their information and hopefully we can we can help out a lot of families this year. But I 100% intend to do it this year regardless of whether or not... I know everything you do is 100% and you have to have the, the whole thing planned yeah. out and good to yeah. go, you know? But that, I think that's so, a part of the story that doesn't get told a lot is that I do yeah. that. I do that's a lot really that. cool, man. That's a really amazing thing, you know. Um, definitely from uh, our part, Real Club and... XPT Realty will be part of it. Nah, anyway, yeah, yeah. That's what we're talking about. Uh, I mean, outside. I, yeah, you know? and, I, and, I, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, because that was an we're accident, all about man. That. that was like yeah. an accident. We're just talking about it. And you're like, hey, man, you know, I'd, I'd help out. And I appreciate that, man. Yeah, man. We, yeah. we, we're all about that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And, you know, they always say two heads work better than one, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> right, definitely. So. Definitely. <laughs> so back to music and back to being an entrepreneur, I want to ask you one thing. You have a kid that is, uh, we do, we are on, by the way, Thank you, audience on YouTube. And if you're listening on Apple, still listening on Spotify and all the other uh, podcast platforms that we have, about eight of them or nine of them, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have a kid out there and we have an international audience and people go listen to on international. Mm -hmm. um, that is 13 and he loves the music and he's just trying to go into the studio to record his first show, whatever, you know, song. 
what advice you want to give them or anybody that is uh, that you like to like new artists and we have tree here he's a young artist you know mm -hmm. uh, for our young artists you know what would be your advice big brother advice you know hey <sighs> this is how you do it this is how you do it this is how you do it you know well you don't want to sound cliche but I think yeah. first things okay. first things first you know like you know establish what what it is that you want to do like what is it that you want to do and, and have a clear definition of what that is because everybody's definition of success is different what I deem successful is what you know is different than the way you deem mm -hmm. successful, right? Everything in life is perspective based, you know. So, I don't want to say that there's, I don't believe necessarily in right or wrong. As of course, there's certain things that are unethical, like you know, murdering somebody's mm -hmm. unethical. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. uh, my point of view is always going to be different from your point of view, regardless. There might be some things that we agree on. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with success. You got to know like how to define what that means to you. Is it based off of money? Is it based off of, you know, streams? Is it based off of views? Like, what fulfills you? And and key in on that, because I think often people have this tendency to look to their left, look to their right, and compare it to other people, and they feel as if they're a failure when they're not reaching a certain level of success based off what they see other people doing. And that's not the right way to look at it, in my opinion. Because at the end of the day, no one's going to be better at being you than you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So be original and be true to yourself. And as long as you're able to establish those things, those that, that foundation of knowing, like, this is who I am. This is what I want. I have a clear goal in mind. Then just key in on that and fall in love with the process and don't become fixated on the end result. Because... Everybody gets fixated on the end result. Everybody wants the million dollars, but they don't want to work for the million dollars. And that's the process to get to the million dollars. You understand what I'm saying? Fall in love with the process and everything else will come. You know, I, I, and I'll, I'll conclude with this, with that. Whenever I, I used to manage my team, I remember I told them once, I said, hey guys, you know, what's more important to you? Being number one or being, you know, or being number one in money? And surprisingly enough, everybody said the money. Mm. Right? Mm. But think about it from a professional sports perspective. When Michael Jordan was at the peak of his career, who was the highest paid? Michael, he, 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 <laughs> right? Yeah. Michael Jordan, right? And, like, yeah. and, and for the most part, mm -hmm. when you strive to be number one, right. the money will come. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, 100%. It's like, so f falling over the process, the end result will come. You know, that's that's amazing, amazing advice out there, man. Well, with that said, man, um, we're pretty much almost out of time, almost uh, done with the day. Uh, to all our sponsors out there, we didn't plug you in today. Every Angle Inspection, Core Four Contractors, Evolve Bank and Trust, um, and then we have Destiny Robinson Agency, uh, Farmers Insur uh, Insurance Agency, and Ar uh, Arlington. Sorry. Um, so we will definitely, you know, just want to let, let, shout out to all the, all four our sponsors. We had a great, great, amazing, amazing guest. I just didn't want her to stop. I just wanted to soak in all of it and apply it to me. I'm being selfish <laughs> here. Selfish fun. here, you know. Take all of it in, you know. Well, I really, really appreciate you coming on here, man. Thank on you. a short notice, you're like my big brother from nah. now on. <laughs> yeah, I big actually, bro. You know, I'm gonna start calling you big bro from nah, now you on. Know, you know? I, 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 you know, so, I'm not gonna wow. lie to you, man. I forgot that I was even doing it, and then he messaged me, and he was like, "Yo, are you gonna come by?" And I was like, "Yeah." And then he hit me up. Yeah, there. I was like, "Fuck." I'm All right, here, that's man. that's I'm here, awesome, man. man. Thank you so much. Anytime, right, man. man. Thank you so much and, for having uh, me. Let me talk, man. Treehead, Shout and this is Real Club, and let's go.